Hi, welcome to the Love Notions YouTube channel. My name is Kim and I run the channel Dorothy's Daughter, which is here on YouTube. I do pattern reviews, product reviews, and a little bit of everything sewing related. So you can check that out if you like. But today I am representing Love Notions and I have been invited here to share with you three hacks that you can do to the neckline of the classic tee. One of my all time favorite patterns that today just happens to be featured. So today, uh, September 30th, 2022, the classic tee is absolutely free if you purchase another pattern. So stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you the bottom options that Love Notions have that you could round out your purchase with and then get your classic tee for free. And then you'll have a complete outfit. So the three versions that I want to share with you is the one first that I'm wearing, the pin tucked version. I'm going to show you how to create those pin tucks. It actually turns out to be a beautiful flowy top and I love it. The next one is kind of a 60s inspired neckline. Uh, it's wide and um, a little bit of a stand up collar. It's about two inches uh, high. And also a braided neckline, which I've been seeing those in the shops and they are just really cute and I've been trying to figure out how to do that without like sewing a braid on top. This is actually woven right into the neckband. So you'll see how to accomplish that. Uh, that'll be the third one that I talk about. And then of course at the end I'll go ahead and share the bottom options that you can uh, purchase from Love Notions and you can make yourself a wonderful outfit. In these pictures I am wearing the Sabrina Slims which is a great pattern. So first of all, the first one I want to talk to you about is the pin tucked version. And that one is um, definitely you need to use like some fabrics that are more flowy. Um, the, I use a rayon spandex and it's very comfortable and um, nice and stretchy and very flowy. And I think that you'd be happier with it if you do use something um, a little more flowy versus a stable knit. A uh, stable knit probably would not be the best option for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I went about drafting onto the classic T pattern the lines to create those pin tucks. Start by drawing a line one and a quarter inch from out from center front. Now I wrote one inch but it actually is one and a quarter. Draw a line one eighth of an inch and as deep as you want your tucks to be. And then you're going to skip a half an inch and then draw a set of two parallel lines that are a quarter of an inch apart. And you're going to do that until you have just the one eighth inch line, half an inch, and then you have four sets of tucks so each one is a half an inch apart and a quarter of an inch wide. Now I brought mine down to nine inches down, which is down below my bust line. And that worked great for me, but you can do it however you like. Transferred these markings to my fabric. And as you can see, um, I used, in case you are wondering what to use for this. I actually use the uh, markers that go away with water. I think it's called Mark Be Gone. They work really well for this because they don't go away when you press, only when you apply water. So I went ahead then and took them to the machine. I started with the out, one of the outer pin tucks and just went all, all the way across sewing them. They're each a quarter of an inch wide so you're going to sew with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. As you're sewing with these thinner fabrics, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you your machine is handling them right and because you're going to want an eighth of an inch seam allowance, which can be tricky, especially with thin fabrics. Now on this first one, my machine did fine, but I did notice that wanting to pull the fabric down in which case what I normally will do is use a hump jumper. But you're going to use that eighth of an inch seam allowance mark on your machine and just proceed slowly. I have them pinned 
and definitely do not ever sew over pins if you want to keep your sewing machine for a long time and you don't want a pin to fly in your eye because accidents do happen but just go ahead and sew those pin tucks make sure that you anchor at the top and the bottom with back stitching for each one that's very important if you don't want them to come out and we're just going to go ahead and proceed all the way across the top like this and there I am back stitching to make sure and it's a little tedious you have to just keep going but the result is so worth it I'm going to go ahead then and sew the next one and I think this is where I needed the hump jumper There we go. That's a hump jumper, that yellow thing. And you just slide it on between your fabric and the presser foot and it grabs that and you can keep going. And a lot of times that's used when there's a thick seam, but I want you to know they're just as good for thin fabrics that like to be sucked into the machine. It works wonders for that. And we're just going to keep going until we've done all of the pin tucks. Remember that the pin tucks are a quarter of an inch wide, so you need to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then between each set of tucks is a half an inch. And you can always uh, take them as low as you want them to be. I did nine inches from the center front. It worked out really well. All right. And I'm showing you this because I feel like showing it to you is the only way to really get the point across. So I apologize if this is taking a long time, but I really want you to see how I'm doing this. So when you line those up, if you're using the Mark Be Gone, if you put the pin in and then you look on the other side, um, you can make sure that you're, you have it folded exactly in half. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up here while I sewed the rest of them. You can see I was using the hump jumper quite a bit. Those are worth their weight in gold, by the way. My favorite sewing accessory. <laughs> All right. I think this is the last pin tuck is when I slowed it back down for you here. So we're going to do the last one. and make sure you anchor that top and bottom <laughs> sometimes I think it's good to see it you fidgeting with it because then when you have to you know it that it's okay and normal <laughs> I think I was checking to make sure that it was in half all right that was my last pin tuck once you have finished the pin tucks Go ahead and fold it in half and just make sure that the curve of the neckline is true to what the pattern is supposed to be before you 
further construct your garment. And remember to press those pin tucks to the outside. All right, and then you end up with this beautiful pin tucked shirt. And I love this shirt so much. I wore this already and have gotten compliments on it. It looks like my dog liked it too. <laughs> anyway, um, the next one I want to talk to you about is the 60s stand-up collar. Um, I kind of think of Jackie Onassis when I see this type of collar. It's kind of wider, um, almost like a turtleneck, but not really. And it, it's I made it two inches tall and then it goes a little bit wider on the scoop. So basically this is just a real simple uh, addition to the pattern and all you need to do, draw one inch out onto the shoulder and then take your curved ruler and meet the scoop neck line at the center front and do the same with the back piece. Also you're going to want to create your neck band by measuring the width of your neckline and making it 8 inches tall and 95% of the measurement of your neckline. You might have to get a calculator out or whatever, but it'll be 95% of whatever the measurement of that neckline is. Normally for a neck band, we use not quite, I mean, we use a little bit more of a stretch factor, but on this one, I didn't want it to stretch too much. So I went ahead and did it 95 just so it would mold a little bit but you would still get that effect of the collar standing up. All right, pretty simple one um, and basically the shirt is just constructed the normal way after that. The next one I want to share with you is the braided neckline and this one I am so excited about. It basically is woven through uh, little holes that we poke in the neck band itself. So what you're going to do is you're going to construct your shirt as normal whether you want to do a crew or a scoop, doesn't matter, just whatever neckline you choose, um, you're going to go ahead and do that as normal. But you're going to cut strips of uh, fabric that are on the stretch, the, the width of the fabric, and you're going to need about three times the width around your neckline to start. And of course I had to use two strips. Um, but you can anchor them halfway around or whatever you need to do. So this is how I'm going to show you a video. It's impossible to explain without showing you. So I went ahead and I made a video showing you how to do it. And basically you're going to watch me braid most of this thing here. So you're going to do is you're going to mark on the center of your neck band one inch increments and just use that mark be gone so that you can um, get rid of the markings later whenever you get it wet and go ahead and do that all around the neckline and then you're going to go back and you're going to go ahead and snip each one of those points just a little bit just enough to poke some fabric through just go all the way around your neckline snipping at each of those points. And just complete all the way around. All right, now you're gonna take your strips, which are one and a half inches wide is what I did. If you wanted to make it um, tighter, you could do the points closer together and make the braid narrower. So what you're going to do is you're going to weave it through. We're going to start at the shoulder seam and weave it through the first point, making a loop. And then what you're going to do is you're going to anchor that with a clip or a pin or something. I suppose if you didn't have a clip, it might even be better to baste it because a pin might fall out. And then you're going to proceed to the next point and go ahead and push that through again, making a second loop. Sometimes a little more difficult to pull those through. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take the forward loop and put it through the first one. Might be a little hard to see on this first one, but 
I'll show you closer up ones here. Put it through and then pull it tight. What you want to do is you want to keep it kind of loose. So what I did was I used my pressing ham to make sure that it could take the form of a neckline and not too tight to where it would gather the fabric. But just keep going with that all around the neckline. You see what a nice braid that's making. And like I said, if you wanted it narrower, just put your things closer together and make your strip a little bit narrower. I kind of liked the the bigger braid. And just keep that going all the way around the neckline. And here we go, I think. Yep, just poke it through. And just kind of straighten it out and then pull it forward. I did that on slow motion so you could see a little better. And then we're going to keep going. Find the hole. I found it a little difficult to find the hole, so I finally went and got a crochet hook would have been much better, but I didn't have one, um, so I used a Cricut tool. But um, that probably was not the best option, but a crochet hook would have worked really well, like a larger one. And just keep going all the way around. And you keep proceeding all the way around the neckline. When you get to the end, what you're going to do is go ahead and Complete the last one and you should be on the shoulder seam again. And what you're going to do is go ahead and pull it through and clip them together. And then you're going to go ahead and trim those streamers on the back. And we'll be sewing those down in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to give this whole thing a good press. And just make sure that it'll all lay flat. So it kind of, you kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit and make sure that none of it is too tight. Um, you might want to stretch out the neckline just a little bit, kind of make sure that all those are fully extended and give it some steam and uh, it looks, it'll lay nice and flat when you're, when you're ready as long as you give it lots of steam and make sure those are, you know, loose enough. You don't want them too loose because you want them to take the shape, but you have to be careful not to do it too tight or they will gather. And once you give it a shot of steam, it should be okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take those two things at the beginning there and just sew right across there, right at the shoulder. There you seam. have it. Those are the three hacks that um, I really enjoyed making and I am loving wearing this one and I cannot wait. I'm a little bit obsessed with the braided one, I have to admit. It, it looks so fun and it turned out like eons better than I thought it was going to. So definitely if you got to try one, that's the one that I would pick. <laughs> so anyway, what I want to do now is to go ahead and um, show you some options for bottoms. So the first one up is my favorite, Sabrina Slims. I love these patterns. This is also the first, uh, Love Notions pattern that I ever sewed. And I love these pants so much. So basically those are like a cigarette pant, um, like Audrey Hepburn, you know, might wear in a movie or something. But um, they're slim and they're cut slim, which actually slims the person. So I really like these a lot. I have made these into jeans. I have made these into dress pants. So you can use them for anything. The next one is Summer K. Summer K is the palazzo pant, the nice wide leg flowy pant. 
Um, but they do have versions that are not quite as wide, but I love the palazzos. I've made the shorts too, and the shorts are really a nice, a really nice uh, length and width to them. They're a lot of fun. Of course, where would we be without glissando? Glissando is kind of a jean type thing, but it's a little bit wider leg and a cropped length. And there's also shorts and a skirt that go with that pattern. And then next is the resolution bottoms. That's actually um, what, another one of my favorites. Um, these fit like a dream and they are basically, they're like the workhorse, the, the athletic pant. Um, they can be joggers almost, they can be they could be joggers, they could be just a, a, a knit basic pant, um, but I love the construction of the yoke in the back. Um, it really is a nice touch and it lends itself to some fun top stitching or reverse cover stitch stitching and they are great pants, one of my favorites. And the duets, what can I say? I did a pant fitting series on my channel a while back that people tend to like and I use the duet because it's a basic trouser and you can actually use these for knits or wovens um, but stable knits are perfect too with this pant but I really like to use this with the twills and things like that. Um, beautiful pants and they fit like a dream. The Ravinia skirt is also fun. I've made the maxi skirt and I love it. Um, it has the short, the midi, and the maxi, and um, this is great. I love the pocket design. They're kind of gathered pockets, really cute, and they're just a fun little detail, and that would look so cute with one of these t-shirts. I think the um, this, this would look so cute with the braided t-shirt tucked in. I, just, I would be adorable. Allegro uh, is another one. This is a woven workhorse pattern. This is the one that's your everyday pant. You can use these for pajama pants as well if you want, but they're just great all around pants and shorts and a little skirt also. Um, I did actually a little skirt hack um, a while back on this one, um, just combining the, sh the skirt and shorts together and it was a really nice little hack. Simple finally is the skirt collection. And if you didn't get to pick it up last week, what a deal that was. But um, it is actually seven patterns uh, for $14.50. So last week it was for $5, so that was pretty good. But seven different skirts. And so that's basically your whole knit skirt wardrobe. So um, Sybil is, I cannot recommend that one highly enough either. So those are the bottom options. And soon to come will be some jeans that Tammy and um, all of us testers are helping her with. And that will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And I'm sure I already have plans to wear all of these tops with my Love Notions jeans when they're all done. So anyway, those are the hacks and the bottom options that I have for you today. And I've enjoyed making this video for you. Check out my channel at Dorothy's Daughter. And all I can say to that, have a great week. Happy sewing.